Everybody hear me? Can you guys hear me over there? Yeah! Free speech! Okay, so welcome to the second annual Occupy Freedoms and Solutions Rally. Today, you will hear some controversial and different ideas on how to change the world. I would like to begin by stating that each of all, or that all of our speakers here are here as individual speakers. This is an exercise in free speech, not a public declaration that we are all associated with each other. I want to make it clear to everyone here that each individual's words are their own. I can speak for no one but myself, and no one can speak for me. So I'm happy, so happy, to be here with so many people who have such diverse ideas, because it is only through new and diverse ideas that we can find solutions. Otherwise, we're just continuing doing the same thing over and over and over again. I also want everyone to know that we are filming a television show for this. So do not be disheartened when you look around and see that there are not massive amounts of people on the grass. Anybody that speaks today isn't just going, their voice is not just going to reach you. It's going on local access television and it will go out all across the internet through the We Are Change network of activists on all sorts of issues, on chemtrails, on GMOs, on free speech, on the United Nations Agenda 21, on, on the right to free, free association, on electronic magnetic uh, radiation, smart meters. So we are all here for the same reason though. We are here to change the world for the better. We are here to show courage and to inspire others to speak up about the issues that really matter to them and to not allow other people to bully them out of engaging in free speech and expressing ideas that sometimes may be controversial, sometimes may be unpopular, but we live in a free country right now and if we don't defend free speech, it'll disappear rapidly. The biggest changes in the world have come from ideas that are different and often unpopular. So with that said, my name is Josh Steffler. I'm here as myself. I'm here to talk about a few things. I'm going to start the rally with a discussion about Agenda 21. Uh, some of our speakers today haven't arrived yet. We've got a lot of awesome speakers coming from Nanaimo, from the islands, from Vancouver. So I encourage anybody, we may be a bit short on speakers, so come talk to us if you've got something to say and you've got a solution that deserves to get out there and sometimes you feel like maybe your voice is ignored, shut down and bullied into being quiet. This isn't a speech that I prepared, it's just a discussion by a lady named Rosa Corey, who is an Agenda 21 advocate or crusader. So, what is the UN Agenda 21? These are key words in Agenda 21, including sustainability and smart growth. These don't necessarily mean what you're being programmed to think that they mean. Since Agenda 21 is being applied in your city, please take time to learn about it. Agenda 21 is implemented worldwide to inventory and control all the land, all water, all minerals, all plants, all animals, all construction, all means of production, all information, and all the human beings in the world. Have you wondered what these terms, sustainability and smart growth and high-density urban mixed-use development came from? 
Doesn't it seem like about 10 years ago, you've never heard of them, and now everything seems to include these concepts? Is that just a coincidence that every town and country and state and nation in the world would be changing their land use planning codes and government policies to align themselves with Agenda 21? Considering its policies are woven into all the general plans of cities and countries, it is important to know where, for people to know where these policies are coming from. The UN wants to see its policies implemented in every city, country, state, and nation. In a nutshell, its plans call for governments to take control of all land use and not leave any of the decision making in the hands of private property owners. It is assumed that people are not good stewards of their own land and that government will do a better job for them. Individual rights in general are to give way to the needs of the communities as determined by the governing body. Moreover, people should be rounded up off the land and packed into human settlements or islands of human habitation close to employment centers and transportation. Another program called the Wildlands Project spells out how most of the land is to be set aside for non-humans. This is communitarianism. The UN Agenda 21 cites the affluence of Canadians, Americans, and all North Americans as being a major problem which needs to be corrected. It calls for the lowering of the standard of living for us so that the people in poorer countries will have a more equitable redistribution of the wealth. This is a cornerstone of the UN Agenda 21 plan. Agenda 21's policies date back to the 70s, but it got its real start in 1992 at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro when President Bush signed on to it. U.S. President Clinton signed it later and continued the program in the United States. A non-governmental organization called the International Council of Local Environmental Initiatives, or ICLE, is tasked with the carrying out of the goals of Agenda 21. There are hundreds and hundreds of cities in the U.S and Canada that are members of ICLEI, and the costs are paid by taxpayers. It's time that people educate themselves and read the document and related commentary. After that, get a copy of your city or your county's general plan and read it. You will find all sorts of policies that are nearly identical in every city to those in the UN Agenda 21. Unfortunately, their policies have advanced largely unnoticed and we are now in the end game. People need to identify their elected officials who are promoting the UN's policies and hold them accountable for their actions. Only when we've identified the, who the people are and what they are trying to do, will we be able to evaluate whether or not we approve of the policies that they're putting forward. Most people will not think it is appropriate for agencies outside of our countries to set policies for us. The question is, aren't we able to develop our own policies? Should we rely on an organization that consists largely of member nations that have different forms of governments, most of which do not value the individual's rights as much as we do in Canada? It's time to bring the UN Agenda 21 out in the open where we can have debates on this. No matter where you live, I'll bet that there have been hundreds of condos built in the center of your town recently. 
Over the last 10 years, there has been a planning revolution across Canada and the United States. Your commercial, industrial, multi-residential lands were rezoned for mixed use. Nearly everything that got approvals for development was designed the same way. Ground floor retail with two stories of residential above. A lot of it is empty and most of the ground floor retail is empty too and there is a high bankruptcy rate. Most of, our, most of the towns provide funding and or infrastructure development for these private projects using your property taxes. Notice how there's very little money in our general funds right now and that most is going to pay police and fire. So why is this Agenda 21? Redevelopment is a tool, to, is a tool used to further the Agenda 21 vision of remaking our cities. With development, cities have the right to take property by eminent domain against the will of the property owner and give it or sell it to a private developer. For pennies on the dollar, declaring an area of town blighted and in some cities in America, over 90% of the city has been declared, of the cities have been declared blighted. The property taxes in that area, the property taxes in that area can be diverted away from the general fund. This constriction of funds is impoverishing our cities forcing them to offer less and less services and reducing all of our standards of living. The money gets redirected into redevelopment agencies and handed out to favored developers using building low-income housing and mixed use. Smart growth. Cities have thousands of condos built in the redevelopment areas and you are being told that you are terrible for wanting your own yard, for wanting privacy, for not wanting to be dictated to by a condo homeowners association board, for being antisocial, for not going along to get along, for not moving into a cramped apartment downtown where they can use your property taxes for paying off that huge debt. But it's not working and you don't want to move in there so they have to make you. Human habitation, as it is referred to now, is restricted to lands within the urban growth boundaries of the city. Only certain buildings are permitted. Rural property is more and more restricted into what uses can be on it. Although countries say that they support agricultural uses, eating locally produced foods, farmer, farmers markets, and etc., in fact, there are so many regulations restricting water and land use. There are scenic corridors, inland island, inland rural corridors, Bay Islands corridors, area plans, specific plans, redevelopment plans, huge fees and fines that farmers are losing their lands and corporations are taking over farmlands. Think Monsanto, forget organic foods. There is a push for people to get off the land and out of the suburbs and come into the city. There is even a push to get people out of their private homes and into condos and get out of their private cars and onto bikes. I like to ride my bike and so do you, so what? It's not about bikes or bike lanes. It's about remaking cities and rural areas into the sustainable model. High density urban development without parking for cars. This is the goal. This means that whole towns need to be redeveloped, demolished and rebuilt in the image of sustainable development. Advocacy is a fancy word for lobbying. 
influencing and maybe strong-arming public policies and politicians. Bike advocacy groups are being used as the shock troops for this plan. What plan? We're losing our homes since this recession, depression began. And many of us could never afford those homes to begin with. We were lured, indebted, and sunk. Whole neighborhoods in North America are empty in some places. Cities cannot afford to extend services outside their core areas. Slowly, people will not be able to afford single family homes. They won't be able to afford private cars or be independent. And we will be more easily watched and monitored. This has all been pre-planned. This plan is a whole life plan. It involves the educational system, the energy market, the transportation system, the governmental system, the healthcare system, the food produ production system, and so much more. The plan is to restrict your choices, limit your funds, narrow your freedoms, and take away your voice. One of the ways that they do this is by using the Delphi technique to manufacture consensus. Another is to infiltrate community groups or actually start neighborhood associations with hand-picked leaders, shills. Another is to groom and train future candidates for local offices to further push the Agenda 21 issue. Another is to sponsor non-governmental groups that go into schools and train children. Another is to offer federal and private grants and funding for city programs that further the agenda. Another way is to educate a new generation of land use planners to require new urbanism. Another is to convert factories to other uses to introduce energy measures that penalize manufacturing and set energy consumption goals to pre-1985 levels. Another is to allow unregulated immigration in order to lower the standards of living and drain local resources. All of this sounds unbelievable until you have had direct experience with it. And unless you resisted it, you never knew it was happening. Okay, I get it now. What can I do? If you've read the site Democrats Against UN Agenda 21 and have read the links, you are probably feeling upset and concerned about your future and the future of your country. Good. There are a lot of issues that make it into the news, but UN Agenda 21 communitarianism, the sustainable development smart growth, they don't show up much. So you're shocked about it. You may even be hoping that it's nothing, that it'll blow over, and that you don't have to do anything at all. But this is real, and your voice is needed. If you're not angry, you're not paying attention. This is an administrative coup d'etat a takeover by corporations partnering with nonprofits in an effort to direct your government to restrict and direct your life, your land, your liberty through regulations. This is a transformation from representative government to serfdom. This is the face of the coming world di dictatorship, and you are the resistance. You've heard the slogan, think globally, act locally? Yes, it's UN jargon. Take your local paper and look for key words about sustainable development and smart growth. Look for articles about redevelopment projects, bicycle boulevards, neighborhood summits, neighborhood elections, neighborhood revitalization projects, neighborhood stabilization projects, visioning local boards, smart growth projects, 
low-income housing subsidies, transportation grants, green building retrofit programmings, programs, well monitoring, smart meters, smart this and that with chips in them, and the people object to them come out every day. Connect with these people. Tell them about Agenda 21. Flyering is one of the most effective ways of reaching a large number of people in a short time. Take flyers around to different neighborhoods, stores, coffee shops for a few weeks. Print out and redistribute your own website or your own flyers or copy this instead and go for it. Rosa Corey has written a book called Behind the Green Mask. I encourage everyone to read it and then read it again and understand that we're being fooled, that smart meters, smart growth, urban redevelopment, it's not about a green future. It is about communitarianism. It is about the control of your life, your liberty, your property, the monitoring of everything you do. Agenda 21 is not just about bike lanes. If it were, there would be nobody out protesting it. But Agenda 21 is so much more. It is the blueprint for a global green dictatorship. Thank you. These were not my words. They were the words of Rosa Corey. I would encourage everyone to check out her website, DemocratsAgainstUNAgenda21.com. I would encourage people to check out Infowars.com, WeAreChangeVictoria.org, and GlobalResearch.ca to find out more about Agenda 21. Check out some films on YouTube. There's an interview with Professor Anthony Sutton, and there's films on the UN Agenda 21 all over the place. Do your own research. Don't believe me, and don't believe the people that are out there saying that Agenda 21 is just about bike lanes. Do your own research and make up your own mind. Don't give up your own power to make up your own mind.